All right. We are live again and again and again. How y'all doing today? Mama, how you doing? You all right? Good. Devin, where you been at, man? Yeah. What y'all do? You teach her the death, burial, and resurrection? All right, well, you failed. She don't know about the death, burial, and resurrection. Teach her that. This ain't just for you. It's for others. Brooke, you all right over there? Mm -hmm. You got to represent today, Debbie. You're the only dude today. You know what to do to her? You got to represent. Because your sister and them just learned the structure. So we got to get this together. All right. We are on part three. Part three of grace in its entirety and how it plays a role in salvation. Part three. Y'all kind of remember what we've been going over? This is class. This is not church. You understand me? This is class. This is not church. What that mean? Why I keep saying that? Why I keep saying this is class, this is not church? Okay, say it again. What about the church? Do you participate? What you do in church? Huh? Hello. Here at Study of Grace, a Bible study of biblical truth. We engage. This is a dialogue setting, bro. This ain't no monologue. You know what I mean? This ain't one guy get up and talk and everybody listen. That's a monologue, ain't it? Yeah. Now, this is a dialogue. We converse. You understand me? We ask questions. We throw our hands up. If, if you don't have questions, I'm going to believe that you got it. You know it. So then I ask questions about what you know. <laughs> Recap part one and part two. Who can do it for me? What were we talking about in part one and part two? Grace in its entirety and how it plays a role in salvation. Who can recap that? Say it again. We had we learned about the grace that no one had, that he found grace because he was an old president. And um and only the way he found grace was because he was obedient to God um, and what he, he listened to what God said to him, which was really the heart of him. And that he had to show that he was well deserved to be in the ark for a hundred years. So he was in the ark for a hundred years? No, 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 no. He had to show that he could come into the ark for a hundred years. And that's the show part of the hundred years. Oh, okay. And then God let him into the ark. Victoria said, hello, somebody. Victoria, welcome to Study with Grace. Share this video. Tag a friend. I don't see you in Bible study in person no more, but I ain't tripping. I lost you online. I'm happy with that. Share, tag, comment. Put it in your stories. Put it on your Facebook wall. Put it on your Instagram. You been got all this social media. Put it somewhere. All right, what else? This sounds like you described part two. What about part one? Devin, you were here. Mama, you were here. Yes, we came out of Genesis. And in Genesis, it was Noah. It was Noah, yeah. All right. And through Noah, it shows that he had his son. Yeah. And through, the son, and through his son. And also, he brought in animals. Yeah. He brought in his family. His family. And their family. Uh huh. All because of what? The blood. Oh, great. Great. Dude. Part one. Recap. From what you know. 
Where your notes? Ain't no excuse. That's what's wrong with dudes today. It's always an excuse. Where your notes from what you had? The little time you was here, where your notes for that? You don't got it. Get your notes out. Y'all just got back, man. I'll be over. <laughs> Devin, get your notes. Take notes. Part one. Let's recap. So, Not you, Jocelyn. Okay. Not Mama. Devin Brooke. This is class. This is not church. Yes, for everybody. Um, well, we learned that the Greek word is translated. Not you, Veronica. <laughs> That's her, bro. I thought uh, God is omnipresent. Oh, he's omni. All right. Because it's on the board. I was hoping somebody just look at the board. <laughs> Oh, one verse goes to, uh, half of them goes to the Jews, and half of it goes to the Gentiles. Just the same verses, okay? What else? Then you can have that anytime. It's on the board, clearly. Blessing. That's right, the Greek word for grace. Then what does chars mean? Absolutely. No one more. No. Victoria said, we talked about why God chose Noah. Absolutely. What else? This is class. This is not church. You're going to get called. I'm going to call you. Hey, what did you learn? What did you study? Where are your notes? It's not a sit down. Let me sit down and just listen. No, you got to participate. You got to take what the Holy Spirit is giving you. Take it back to the notes. Study. That's what it's saying, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, what? Study the what? Study the what? Show yourself approved. You ain't showing yourself approved, you don't study, bro. It's a requirement. Huh? And how Noah found grace, that's right. Brittany Wallace, how's it going? Hey, hope my mic sound good and hopefully this the mic don't go out again and call static. You understand me? So, we're going to go into part three of this. Grace in its entirety and, how's it play, and how it plays a role in salvation. Everybody should have their notes. Ready to take notes. Because Friday, we got a pop quiz. <laughs> All right. Remember, there are two types of different graces. The notes on the board. Common grace. Salvational grace. How y'all missed that? Oh, shoot, with that, uh, we went over how many times grace was found in the Bible. Um, it's, it's, it's on the board, bro. 170 times. Grace, um, grace of God, the gospel, the DBR, grace in the New Testament, 131 times. It's on the board. Lack of effort. We talked about two types of grace in the New Testament. Alexis, what are those two types of graces? Say it again so I can hear you. Common grace and salvational grace. Absolutely. Common grace and salvational grace. 
common grace and salvational grace are found in the New Testament. In the word grace, the Greek word grace in the New Testament is called charge, which means what, Brooke? Favor, blessings, and kindness. This should be in your notes. All right. So you can get an understanding on what grace is. Everybody always associate and attach grace with money. Gifts like tangible items. What is tangible? What does that mean? Devin, what does tangible mean? T-A-N-G-I-B-L-E. Tangible. G-I-B-L-E. Sound it out. Associate grace with tangible things. Perceptible by touch. Absolutely. Something you can get. Man, it's grace. I mean, I got me a new house, man. It's, it's a blessing. It's grace. They teach you, Devin, that grace is prosperity. Something you can grab and get a hold to. My son, I think, get caught part of that. Now, my son, that's why he's going to take notes and learn the truth. <laughs> that's what they teach us. That you got to work to gain To gain what, Devin? They teach you that you got to work to gain what? To gain. Grace. That's right, to gain grace. That's what they teach you. This is wrong. That's wrong. You don't got to work to gain grace. They teach you that. And they get this theology from where? Jocelyn. What about the Old Testament? What about Noah time? That he had to work to, he had to, work to gain the grace. He had to find the grace. See, I ask you where they get this theology from, and you say the Old Testament. Then I say, what about the Old Testament? Noah. What are people? People don't know who Noah is. People know who the old, what the Old Testament is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they get this from the Old Testament, and the Antichrist flip it on us because we think that it's something we gotta what do. You understand that, Devin? Or you lost? You completely confused. So you got that? Should be in your notes because I'm asking you this question Friday. So we got to do something. That's what they teach you. You got to do something. They say doing something equals grace. What else? What else? Confess, if you confess. Uh-oh. Call, Call on the name. We can stop there. They teach you got to do something to get grace. You got to confess for you to get grace. And you got to call on the name so you can get grace. But is that what the scriptures say? No. This is all wrong. You don't got to do nothing for grace. Why don't we got to do, no do anything for grace, Devin? We're not in that era. What era are we in? And what is that? Absolutely. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. 
We're not in that because of the death, burial, and resurrection of who? Alexis. Can nobody hear you? Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Jesus Christ. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The hope of glory. And because of his death, burial, and resurrection, we now have grace in who? In Jesus Christ. Moses gave the law, right? And the law, and the law was where? That's the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, when there's a law, law got to be what? It start with an A. Abided by. What you say, Devin? Absolutely. Moses gave the law in the Old Testament. Grace is already given to us by Jesus. That is right, Brittany. That is right. Moses gave the law in the Old Testament. And when, if there's a law there, you have to abide by it. To abide by something, Devin, what does that mean? You got to follow it. I mean, it's something you got to do, right? So Noah had to do something to obtain what? Grace. Grace. So you see why people teach that you got to do something for grace. But where, where are they wrong at? The dispensation. They not dispensating the word of truth at all. Everything in scripture is written for us. But everything is not to us. Did I, did I say that right? Everything is written to us. There it is. Everything is written to us, but everything isn't for us. So they teach that you got to do it. You got to abide grace. If you, they teach that if you speak and confess grace, you know, you can just speak things and, as though, you know, into existence, like you got some power. If you got faith, if you're just speaking, it's going to be all right. Because it takes scriptures out of the Bible, misinterpret it, and think that it applies. Like when Jesus said, cast a mountain in the sea. You understand me? If you just have faith, right? So now, they believe if you just have faith and speak to whatever the situation is, it could be cast in the sea. And they totally misinterpret that scripture. Totally, I mean, they totally misinterpret it. You see, because they want to teach a lot of what? Start with a P, Devin. A lot of what? They want to teach a lot of what? Prosperity. Something that helps you. Go get your money. Go get your help. And they attach that to grace. So now every time, you know, oh, that's grace. Stop it. <laughs> you're, not, you're not looking at the, de the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're looking at what you can get up out of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not about you. It's about what you can get. And you call it grace. And then you teach it on everybody. But what we're going to do is study with grace since this is not church. <laughs> this class, we're going to really dissect this word grace in its entirety. So, Common grace and salvation of grace is a gift. That means there's nothing you do. Remember, we went over that, right? There's nothing you do to obtain common grace and salvation of grace. Over here, there's a lot you have to do to obtain grace in the Old Testament. Because the law was given to Moses. 
But let me put it in a different color. Where my blue at? There it is. But grace and truth by who? By Jesus Christ. Y'all see the difference? The law was given to Moses, something you got to abide by, something you got to do. And them people found grace. Noah found grace. And I'm going to go through a few more people where you can see how they found grace. Why did they have to find grace then? Brooke. They had to find grace then because well, in the Old Testament? Right. Because they didn't work that. Why? Because God didn't give you that. There it is. Ooh, I tried to get you. <laughs> they had to find grace because grace and truth ain't yet came yet. The free gift has not came yet. So until he come, they had to find grace. Huh? Are y'all getting this? Grace is the same throughout the entire Bible. But its operation to obtain it is different. Who confused? You confused? What you confused about? You can't hear you. What you lost about? They can't hear you. The Moses law? All right, let's go to it. God gave the law to Moses. What's the law? The 613 laws that you better not do. You remember that? We talked about that? Right? So you had to abide by those laws, like the Ten Commandments and stuff like that. You familiar with that? So you had to abide by it. I mean, you had to do it. And if you do it, you have now found what? If you abide by the law and do it, you have now obtained what? Alexis, help him out. Grace. If you abide by the law, meaning do it, in the Old Testament, then people obtain Grace. So they had to do something to do what? To get what? Grace. You see it confused? Over here on our side, Jesus did everything for us to um, receive grace. And how, what did he do for us? Absolutely. So now, once we accept and believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, God said, this is a free gift that I give you, not of, of yourself, not of your work, but of grace through faith. So we don't got to work for grace anymore because Jesus did the work. You understand that part? Write it in your notes. <laughs> Jamar said how did they find grace okay I get it I'm going to show you how they found grace see look in the Old Testament this type of grace that was extended to Noah and his family was a watch this watch this David. faith Obedient, what else? O B I E, like this, huh? What else? Faith, obedience, and right living. That's grace. 
in order for them to obtain grace, in order for them to find, found grace, they have to find it. And the way they find grace is through faith, obedience, and right living. Without these three components, grace could not have been extended because grace and truth, like Brooke said, has not came yet. Too confused. Grace in the Old Testament was not a gift. In the New Testament, it's a gift. In the Old Testament, it's not a gift. It's actually earned. You had to earn grace. That word is obedience. I just didn't spell it right. <laughs> Faith, obedience, right living. That's grace, Old Testament. You got to do something to obtain grace. Do y'all get that? That's Old Testament grace. Grace is good all across the board. It's the same formula. You got to do something to obtain it. The difference is Jesus did the work for us so we can obtain it. We're not bypassing the work. Y'all get that right? Because Jesus did the work. We're not skipping the work part. It's still the same formula. Jesus just, you know, this is class. This is not church. Remember, in the, in the New Testament, right? Grace is found in scriptures how many times? One hundred seventy times. It's on the board, ladies and gentlemen. You got to be kidding me. Jamal says, so if they slipped up in any area, then no more grace. That is right. Absolutely. <laughs> if they don't set that burnt offering on the altar, they out of there. That's right. If they don't cut the throat of that little lamb for their sin, they out of there. The word grace is found in the New Testament. I'm, not, I'm sorry. The word grace is found in the Bible. How many times? Devin. They can't hear you, bro. It's too low. Absolutely. And how many verses is that word grace found? Alexis. 159. 159 times. That's right. So the word grace is found in the entire Bible 170 times. 170 times. And out of 170 times, it's found in 159 verses. All right. In the Old Testament, the word grace is found how many times? Brooke. 39, 39 times out of how many verses? Joshua. 37, 37 verses. So in the Old Testament, the word grace is found 39 times in 37 verses. But in the New Testament, the word grace is found how many times? There. 131 times. How many verses? 122. So clearly, God deals with grace more in the what? In the New Testament than what? Than the Old Testament. Who got questions? This is class. This is not church. We have a, a, a dialogue. Say no, sit down and be quiet. Because I'm going to call you out. <laughs> now watch this. In the Old Testament, the word grace is used 39 times, right? Out of those 39 times, guess what? There's a particular word or words, right? That comes before the word grace. And it appears 26 times. So you have grace. And this in the Old Testament. The word grace in the Old Testament appears 39 times. Right? And now that 39 times, 26 times, does this word right here appear? Y'all ready? 
right before grace every single time is this word then grace this word then grace every single time for 26 times y'all ready the word found or find in the old testament Twenty-six times, Alexis, in the Old Testament, the word "found" or "find" comes right before the word "grace." <laughs> the word "found" or "find" appears twenty-six times in the Old Testament before the word grace. Why is that? Why is it that the majority of the time the word grace in the Old Testament is associated with what? Find or found. Why? Hold on. What you say, Devin? You had the doggone earn it. People, that's a problem with y'all today. Feel like you don't got you don't got to earn nothing. You, like you just got maids walking around here. And so guess what they do? They see that you lazy. They preach to you a doctrine of work. <laughs> y'all see that? Y'all see that? Oh, you think everybody owe you something? All right. Then they take it to the Old Testament. Work, do. Now, you should want to do because of what Jesus Christ did, not because you're lazy. Why they do it? The answer is very simple. It's because grace in the Old Testament is associated with faith, obedience, right living, and doing, right? Or wrong? Who disagree? Let's talk. This class is not church. I'm not up here by myself. If I want to be up here by myself, I start a church. This is class. It's not church. <laughs> 26 times out of the 39 times the word grace is found in the Bible, found or find comes before the word grace. Why? Nowhere else in scripture does found and find come before the word grace. Huh? It's only in the Old Testament. It's not in the New Testament. Why these people got to find grace or found grace, find grace, found grace. But over here, we ain't found nothing or find, we ain't found or find nothing. The dog, we say it again? The DBR. the DBR, the dead, burial, and resurrection. Remember, Moses gave the law, but grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. Somebody did this doing faith, obedience, right living, etc. for us. They don't want you to know that. Tell you what grace is in its entirety. Go back and watch part one and two so you can really get an understanding on grace in its entirety and how it plays a role in salvation. As we walk through Noah, grace of Noah. So look, let's look at some BCVD. Y'all know, David, what's BCVD? BCVD. Say it louder, we can't hear you. Bible chapter and verse. Dispensation. That's right. Dispensation. Let's get some BCBE, Bible chapter and verse, dispensated. Because it's easy to run to the Bible and get a, get a scripture. You cherry picker. You buffet. Them. They take the Bible and just buffet. Jamal said, we don't have to find grace now. Do we have to find grace now? 
Absolutely not. We don't find grace. How can we find something that's a gift? It's given to you as a gift. <laughs> you don't work for grace like, like Noah had to do. Scripture say in Genesis 6 and 8, Noah found grace. <laughs> so let's look at some BCBD. Bible chapter and verse dispensated. And see how grace is expressed with finding it and found it. Okay. Found and find grace. Let's go to the Old Testament and figure out how in the world or why in the world these people had to find or found grace. Because that's what they teach us today. This same principle. And when they do that, they put a mark, put a big X on our King Jesus Christ. Like what he did was just pointless. So we talked about Noah, right? The, the word grace first appeared in the Bible when it comes to Noah. Remember, y'all thought it was Adam and Eve, right? So let's talk about somebody else. We talked about Noah. Now let's talk about Moses. Let's talk about Moses. What y'all know about Moses? The prince. He brought the law. I don't tell you to quote no movie because y'all seen the Ten Commandments movie. Y'all think y'all know who Moses is? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to go to the scriptures. <clears throat> Let's go to Exodus chapter 33 and 13. There's only one verse in the Bible where found and find is connected to grace in the same verse. The other times it's either found grace by itself or find grace by itself. But this particular verse in Exodus 30, 33 and 13, found and find or find and found, whichever way you want to put it, is linked together. So that means there's a difference between found and find. KJV. KJV. There's a difference between found grace and find grace. It's a difference. I'm trying to show you grace in its entirety and how it plays a role in salvation. This is two different entities. All right, y'all there? All right, let me go and read it. Now, therefore, I'm in Exodus 33 and 13. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I make now thee. I'm sorry, let me read it again. Exodus 33 and 13. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Did y'all peep that? Y'all didn't peep that, did you? Y'all peeped that? Did y'all see that? What y'all peep? Let's hear it. Start with Devin. Talk loud so they can hear you on the mic, bro. <laughs> Talk loud so the people on the computer can hear you. What you peep? I'll see you next. Brooke, you have the hub. Alexis, you have the hub. Mom, you have the Alexis. David, what did you pick? Let me read it again. We're talking about found and find grace, bro. We're talking about there's a difference between found grace and find grace. And this verse says use both words, found and find, in the same verse. My question is, did you pick? The difference? Let me read it again. 
Exodus 33 and 13. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. What you peep? Talk loud, bro, so they can hear you. What does thy mean, Josh? Thy? What does thy mean? Mine. It's like you and your person is. It's true, bro. It ain't got to be right or wrong. Let's just hear what you got. Loud, where they can hear you. That they might find their grace. Yes, I. Okay, that's that's what you think it's like, me. That's why this is class. You, you're not gonna know if you don't know. That's why this class. It's not a bad answer. Jackson, what you say? When it says, "If I have found grace," that sounds to me like he's going on, like he's trying to, he's working to, to find it. That's what I think. And then it says right here, it says, that's I made my grace. That sounds like more of God allowing him to act, like, find the grace, like, get the grace. All right. What about you, bro? Uh, also, some people uh, ask for the Israelites, so they can have grace as well, because they can't see what's going on. Okay. All right. Um, I think... That that scripture means that he like found grace, like he knows what it is, you know, like he knows what it has to be, but I have it. Uh -huh. Wait, no, he knows about grace, but he as in a found, and as in a find, it's him doing it. You're saying found is knowing what it is, and find is him doing the action. All right, two mama. You on God? All right. Those are good efforts. Those are good doggone efforts. Two of y'all are right. Let me read it. Watch this. The only way Moses could have found grace, when you when you have found something, what happened? Huh? Right. You found it. Got it. Right? So the only way Moses could have found grace, which is get the grace, right, with God, the only way he could do that is only by putting forth the what? The effort. So found is got it. Find is doing oh. effort. Did y'all not see the, the definition over here? Faith, obedience, righteous living, doing. Moses, Moses gave the law. What's the effort? What's the effort? If found is, I got the grace, and find is, Doing it, putting the effort in to find, you know, finding the found, find is doing, then what was the effort that Moses did to find grace, to found it? He was obedient. He was obedient? He tells you that effort in the same verse. Let's, let's read it again. Exodus 33 and 13. Tori said, okay, he found it now. Show him the way now. He has to put the work in. Makes sense. I think I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Let's read it again. Now, let me know when you come across the effort part. Exodus 33 and 13. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in the sight, in thy sight, Show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. 
Mama? Am I Bible-taker? Y'all say favor. Man, favor. What does that say? Favor. Right. Y'all say favor. Because you're reading a different translation. Okay. It means the same. Oh. But remember, charge, favor, blessing, or kindness. Favor. That's the same. Now watch this. In order for Moses to have found grace, he had to go and what? He had to go and what? It's right here. He had to go and find it. In order for Moses to have found grace, Moses had to go and find it. He had to go find grace. Right? And we just stated that finding grace is doing something, his effort. Right? And we know what doing is. Faith, obedience, right living, doing, right? Yes. The way he finds grace so it can be found is by moving in the way God wants him to move. Mm -hmm. Did y'all peep that? Yes. It said in the scripture, now therefore I pray thee, if I, find, if I found grace in thy sight, now watch this, this is the do part right here. Show me now thy way that I may know thee. Moses asked God basically this. Moses needed God to teach him. <laughs> he needed, God, Moses needed God to um, teach him his ways so he can find the grace. God needed Moses needed God to teach him God teach him God's ways in order for him to have found grace. So by him doing God's ways, he is doing what? Finding what? Finding grace. Who confused? Who got it? That's her, Devin. What you got? Absolutely. Him splitting the seed? Absolutely, that was grace. Absolutely. Well, it was God doing it through Moses. By faith. And what? Obedience. And Moses had to do. Are y'all getting this? Can't y'all see the difference? Found and find? Yes. Huh? That's right. The way he finds grace so it can be found is by moving in the way God wanted him to move. He had to do something. Do y'all get that? Can Moses just sit there and chill? So he can't Netflix and chill? Huh? Dude had to do something. And that's what they teach y'all today. They talk, teach all of us. That, that work, grace is a part of work. And you better maintain it. You better walk the thin line because heaven is narrow. Hell is broad. And that's false doctrine. <laughs> huh? Grace in the Old Testament can be obtained by what? Grace in the Old Testament can be obtained by what? Huh? Finding it. That's how they obtained grace. They had to find it. Just in me. So obtained grace in the Old Testament, they had to go and find it. They weren't giving it to 
freely as a gift like we are because Jesus did everything for us. That's why you're not involved in salvation. You can't be involved in salvation if Jesus done everything for you. You want to be a part of salvation so bad and you're going to burn. Hell, you're going to go. You think your right living, you think your obedience is what saved you? It does not. What saved you is Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. Trust and believe in that through his blood and his blood alone. Nothing else. Everything else follows that. I want to be obedient. I want to live right. Not that being obedient and living right saved you. What saved you is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our King, the hope of glory. <laughs> Your daddy don't save you. If he ain't right, he gonna burn. Huh? Finding means learning the ways of God for a particular situation. Who confused? Each situation is different. Moses' situation is different from Noah's situation, but both of them got grace. Huh? Brittany, you on here? Huh? Notice this right here, y'all. Y'all ready? When the grace was obtained for Moses, it was the same grace for Noah after the work was put in. Even though it was different ways, but it was after when after the work was put in. Noah was saved from the flood in the ark, right? But before he can get in the ark, what did he had to do? Work. He had to put the effort doing. He had to find that grace. He had to put the work in. Let's go to First Peter, chapter three and twenty. First Peter, chapter three and twenty. I gotta show y'all this. I gotta show you, Devin, my son, that there's a difference between grace in the Old Testament and grace in the New Testament. You got to learn this. You can't leave no family without Christ. You're doomed. You out of there. All right, it reads, 1 Peter chapter 3 and 20. Which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was while the ark was a preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Y'all see that, Grace? How were the eight souls saved by water? Absolutely, building the ark. This is not a verse of being baptized in water. The craziest thing ever, interpretation I ever read, heard somebody say, I mean, now it is. Back then it wasn't. Now it is. Then I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to teach me and reveal to me the truth. So Noah was saved from the flood in the ark. Watch this. And when he was in the ark, Noah did what? Netflix and chill. Yeah, he, he, he worked, but everybody else dead. Yeah. Everybody, every bacteria went to a Bible set on the flood. I'm going to show you how the flood went out into space. Huh? In the moon craters. The flood went into space. That's how high the dude ark was. It was in space. 
That sounds funny, don't it? It's in scripture. Dude, God flooded the planet so severely that the waters was in space. <laughs> we'll get to that another time. Y'all want to do a Bible study on the flood? We'll do a Bible study on the flood. Now watch this. While Noah rested in the ark because he was being saved through water, Moses found rest as well in God's presence. So y'all know that? Were y'all, were y'all aware of that? That Moses found rest in God's presence? Let's go to Exodus. We're in the same book. Exodus 33, because we're talking about Moses, Grace. Exodus 33 and 14. Exodus 33 and 14. It reads, and he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. And I will give thee rest. And if you read that in the whole context, you'll see about him giving, finding. We just read found and find. Didn't we just read that? We just read Exodus 33 and 13. Now we're reading Exodus 33 and 14, the very next scripture. So you know what? Let's just read it all together. Because some of y'all was confused about that. Who's confused? Don't lie either. One, two. Oh, three. All right. Oh, Lex, you want confused? Oh. Let's read it all together. Exodus 33, 13 through 14. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, Show me now thy way that I might know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight, and consider this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. <laughs> so once he find grace, how he find grace? In this particular verse, how does Moses find grace? So he need God to teach him, right? So he can find grace in his sight. And then God turned around and said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. So after he found, after he go and find it by doing what God, God he asked God to teach him what to do to find to, to have found grace. So now that he has found grace, what's the grace? Rest. <laughs> My presence is gonna be with you. So rest, chill out. Your daddy right there ain't nothing to be scared of. Just, just chill. I'm hungry. Don't worry about it. My dad in there, he's going to make sure I eat. I'm all right now. Dad, we're going to eat pizza tonight? Because, you know, he got to find it. Okay, here it is. He hungry. We're going to call him hungry. He hungry, right? The grace part is the food. So he got to figure out a way how to get to the food. Right? He got to find out how to Found, be found in grace. Mm -hmm. Dad, I, should we gonna eat some pizza tonight? What, what are you doing? He's trying to figure this thing out. He's trying to find food. He's trying to find grace. Don't worry about it. You're all right. I'm gonna go get it. Now, grace on Cain. Now he all right. I'm gonna be eating pizza, y'all. I'm all right now. <laughs> now he can rest. Y'all understand this or no? But that was for them. That's not for us. Jesus did all that for us. You understand the difference, Devin? That was for them. That's not for us. Jesus did that for, for, for us, so we don't got to go through that. That's why we're in the grace age. That's why we're saved by grace and not of works, not of yourselves. Not of righteous living. Every but of what Jesus Christ did on the cross is death, burial, and resurrection. 
That's the gospel. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses one through four. This is the gospel of grace. This is how we're being saved. That Jesus died on us, died for our sins according to the scriptures and it was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. You share that with everybody. If you trust in that and you believe that, you are then sealed with the Holy Spirit. No one has to come lay hands on you. You don't got to speak in tongues. You ain't got to be baptized in no water. You are sealed just off of believing 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. Don't let people teach you today you have to work and show yourself approved for grace, for the grace of God to manifest in your life. What does manifest mean? Speak like, like it into existence. Yeah. I know what manifest, but I don't know how to manifest. What is manifest? You got Google. Give me the definition for manifest. This is class. This is not church. This ain't guessing land. There it is. Say it again so they can hear you. Hold on, Brunkle. You got it, Brunkle? So my, my I am now. Clear, obvious to the eye or mind. Absolutely. Don't let people teach you that. Not today. Then, yes, they had to. Then, yes. But today, no. Don't let people teach you that. That you got to work to show yourself approved for grace, meaning for salvation. You got to work and show nothing. You got to just believe, trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are under a new covenant. Do y'all understand that? You are under a new covenant. Get that from him. Devin mentioned that earlier today. We're under a new covenant. And that covenant we're under is called grace. But it ain't this the same, it's the same grace, but it's different. It's a covenant of grace given to you as a gift. They had to work. This not a gift. We didn't have to work. This is a gift because the worker did it for us. Who's the worker? Jesus Christ. And he's a gift, and he, he is a gift from God. That's how much he loved us. So while you out still doing things, God say, I love you. I love you. Here's my son. I give, a, I give you my son. Y'all understand? Y'all understand? Let's read. Let me show this to you. You're under the new covenant. You're not under this Old Testament covenant. You're under a new covenant. And I'm going to show you the rules and regulations of grace under the new covenant. Just for a split second, I'm going to go back to the Old Testament. Because we ain't done with it in the Old Testament grace. Let's read Romans 6 and 14. Romans 6 and 14. This is pretty good. This is class. This is not church. <laughs> Romans 6 and 14 reads, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. We under grace, Debbie? Huh? How are we under grace? Brian, turn, turn the mic on. Say it again so they can hear you. Here's a question. Two questions. Are we under grace? How are we under grace? What's the name of y'all? Say it loud. Death, burial, resurrection of zombies? Of Jesus Christ. That's right. Let's keep going. Hebrews chapter 8 and 6. Hebrews chapter 8 and 6. Share this video. Tag a friend. Comment. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, it reads, 
But now had he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. So you mean tell me this grace has a mediator, a better covenant, and better promises? <laughs> but yeah, you still want to let people tell you this. These things come with you accepting Christ. Automatically. You're not doing these things to stay in good standards with Christ because you can never please him. You can't please God. Only thing that please God is you accepting his son, death, burial, and resurrection. Let's go to Hebrews 8 and 13. Hebrews 8 and 13. It reads, In that he said, A new covenant he had made, the first old. Let me read that again. I'm getting used to reading the King James Version myself. <laughs> In that he said, A new covenant he had made, the first old. Now that which decay it and wax it old is ready to vanish away. What that mean? What that mean, Alexis? I don't know. You don't know? I thought you didn't know. <laughs> the old one going away and the new one coming, which is better promises with a mediator. And yet you still in the old stuff? You stay under the old grace. You don't want to get under the new grace. You want to stay under the old grace. You want to stay under the old law that decay it. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 7 and 22. I'm going to show you why it's better. Hebrews chapter 7 and 22. I get excited talking about King Jesus Christ. Y'all ready? Yes. Devin, you ready? Hebrews 7 and 22. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. A surety of a better testament? This one got real. A surety? Now that you know we're under a new covenant, who's this new covenant by? Jesus Christ. Say it again, Alexis and Devin. Who is this new covenant by? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Devin, sit right here. All right. Alexis and David, who's this new covenant by? Jesus, Jesus died on Christ. Jesus Christ is the reason why the old grace is gone and we're under a new grace. You understand me? And it's through, through Jesus Christ what? Brooke. Through his what? And that's, and that's through his what? Through his what? Huh? No, Joshua, she need help. The blood. The blood. It's through Christ's blood. Oh, nah, I, can't, I can't write blood. I can't get, yeah, I give, give a little more power than that. Wow. Through the blood. It's through Jesus' blood that this new era of grace exists. We ain't under no old grace. We ain't got to go find and found grace. We ain't got to go out and, and find it and, and, and found it. We found it. Like Noah and Moses and Ruth and Jacob. Don't worry, we can get in there in a minute. We ain't got to find nothing or found. It was found. It was a gift. a gift. And God's gifts is irrevocable. 
This is a covenant of grace and you and I are ministers of the New Testament. Do y'all understand that? Jesus set the covenant up for us of grace, right? And you and I are ministers of the New Testament. All right? The New Testament is grace through the blood. Do y'all understand? Grace in the Old Testament is gone. It's decayed. Ain't that what it said? Yeah, One of the new grace. But the same formula still applies through in, in both old and new. You gotta be, you gotta find it and you gotta it gotta be found. The difference is they actually had to do it themselves. Moses, Noah, etc. Us, somebody intervened on our behalf. Who was that? And he did it for us through his blood. So no one can boast. Noah can boast. Moses can boast. <laughs> huh? Ruth can boast. We can't. <laughs> the king did it for us. Second Corinthians chapter three and six. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse six. We got to understand where we at. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse six. You ready, Alex? Let's dive on in. Who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kill it, but the spirit give it life. What that mean, Devin? If y'all want me to read it again, say, read it again. 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. Who also, remember we're talking about we are ministers of the new covenant of grace, right? I'm going to show you how we are ministers of the new covenant of grace through Jesus Christ's blood. 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. Who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament. What that means? It's out top. We ain't the ministers of the Old Testament? So why we act and talk like we ministers of the Old Testament? Under a grace that's decayed. Ain't that what it read? It's decayed. Watch this. Not of the letter. What's the letter? The letter means law. All right, Devin? The letter means the law of Moses. That's what letter means, the law. Write that in your notes. I'm going to ask you Friday. But of the spirit. What's the spirit? The Holy One, the Holy Spirit. For the letter kill it. What that mean? The law kills it. But the spirit what? So why are you said it banging this old grace to do the work and all this mess? We're supposed to go back and look upon Moses and knowing them and learn. This should, this should make us get closer to Christ even more. Like, man, Lord, just thank you for doing that for us, man. I know I would have failed doing that. You think that you would have you succeeded in Noah days? You wouldn't. You've been gone right along with everybody else. The whole planet was gone except Noah and his family. You know how I many people on earth then? But every last person in here probably think, yeah, man, I would have been right. <laughs> You've been out in them pause like everybody else. <laughs> they in them parties big kicking it. Having fun like y'all do today. <laughs> Absolutely. You've been right along with them. Thank God for Mr. Grace and Truth. I like that. Mr. Grace and Truth. 
<laughs> I'm gonna put that on the shirt. You understand me? Now watch this. Let's go back to the Old Testament and read a few verses associated with found and find when it comes to grace. Let's look at Jacob and Esau. The brothers. The brotherhood. You understand me? Jacob, but we talk, so we're done with Moses, right? We understand what Moses had to do. We saw the found and finding Moses. We saw the found and finding Noah. Let's find the found and finding Jacob and Esau. Hey, Atlanta, I ain't really never heard you talking about the Old Testament. You just said you were minister of the New Testament. What you back in the old for? Because I owe scripture for learning. But I don't live by the Old Testament. Go ahead. I don't live by the Old Testament. I live by the law of Christ. All right. Let's look at Jacob and Esau. Let's read Genesis 33, 8 through 10. Genesis 33, 8 through 10. Hey, Deja, Deja say, thank you, God. You go back and look at these men, how they had to go and put up, put up their work. Genesis 33, 8 through 10. Go look at Moses and Noah and all these different people they had to put the work in. And you sitting here frowned up and like you mad, like somebody curl. When grace and truth came, ain't nobody scared of you. No man had to put work in. If they didn't put work in, guess what happened to them? They died. They had to put work in and they didn't put the work in. If they go out and find grace, they died. But once they found it, there's rest. Y'all remember? All right. Genesis 33 and 8 through 10. We're talking about Jacob and Esau, about found and find grace. And he said, what menaced thou by all this drove which I met? And he said, these are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, nay, I pray thee. If now, I, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore I have seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God, and thou, and thou wast pleased with me, wast pleased with me. Yeah, I got to uh, get better reading this King James. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to where I was. Now, remember that in the Old Testament, in order for grace to be operational, something or some or some work had to be done first. In the Old Testament, in order for grace to be operational, something or someone work has to be done first in order for grace to be found. Do y'all understand or no? My question is, can y'all point out the find and found grace between Jacob and Esau? Let's read the passage in context. I'm going to read this passage this time in CSB. In CSB, you're going to notice the word favor being replaced with grace. Which is fine for us because we know that charge is the Greek word for it. And it means favor, blessing, and kindness. And also in the Hebrew text, it means the same. So let's go to Genesis 33, 1 through 11. And let's read it in the CSB. 
So I'm going to chop that up. 33, 1 through 11. Well, when I'm reading this, let me know where you see where, uh, where Jacob found, was finding grace, and then he found it. All right? Remember the word favor means grace. All right? I'm reading 1 through 11. Now Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming toward him with 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two slave women. He put the slaves and their children first, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph last. He himself went on ahead and bowed to the ground seven times until he approached his brother. Who's his brother? But Esau ran to meet him. So I mean that he didn't get to reach his brother because Esau ran to Jacob. So, but Esau ran to meet him, hugged him, threw his arms around him and kissed him. Then they wept. What does they wept mean? When Esau looked up and saw the woman and children, he asked, who are these with you? Who are the woman and children? Y'all remember, I just named them Leah, Rachel, right? Esau asked, who are these, who, you know, Esau looked up and saw the woman and children. He asked, who are these with you? Jacob answered, the children God has graciously given your servant. Graciously. Right? Uh, what number, mom? Then the slaves and their children approached him and bowed down. So the slaves and the children approached him and bowed down, bowed down to who? Esau. Leah and her children also approached and bowed down. And then Joseph and Rachel approached and bowed down. So Esau said, what do you mean by this whole procession I met? What does procession mean? Hit the little three dots. Camp. Watch this. So Esau said, what do you mean by this whole camp I met? The camp is the people in front of them, right? Like this, I count, right? Watch this. Jacob said, to find grace with you, my Lord. Can't CSB say favor? He answered. So Jacob is trying to find uh, favor, which is grace. How is he doing that? How is Jacob? The, say it again. By bringing the people who he got graciously. Who are people? Absolutely. The women and children. To find favor with you, my Lord, he answered. Y'all notice how he called him Lord? I have enough my brother, Esau replied. So Esau told Jacob, I have enough. You see that? Keep what you have. But Jacob said, no, please. If I have found favor or grace with you, take this gift from me. For indeed, I have seen your face, and it is like seeing God's face since you have accept, since you have accepted me. Please take my present that was brought to you because God has been gracious to me, and I have everything I need. So Jacob urged him, urged him until he accepted. I know we saw that, right? Now, what was the find, F-I-N-D, what was the find grace? What was the find grace of Jacob? Find. Say it again. Bringing the people. In order for him to have found grace, he had to go find it first. 
And the finding was him doing what? Bringing the, the slave women and children, etc. He had to do that. He couldn't find grace. He couldn't have found grace if he wouldn't have done that. Do y'all see that? Are y'all sure? Jacob was trying to obtain grace by giving Esau the woman and children, the camp. <laughs> now, what was the found? Grace. Esau saying, I don't need that. Jacob saying, look, God being graciously to me, let me do the same to you. <laughs> the gift, as I say in King James. Do y'all understand that? Yeah. See how found and find is associated to grace when it comes to Jacob and Esau. Found and find is associated to Moses. Found and found was associated to Noah. Found and find grace is also associated with Ruth. Ruth, y'all know about her. He brought, ask your teacher. What's the question? What did he bring the people? Did Jacob bring the people to? His brother. Esau. Watch this. This is the final one. Let's go to Ruth. Let's see if we can identify the find and the found grace of Ruth. And this is the last one. Ruth. Man, we did Noah. We did Moses. We did Jacob and Esau. Now we're going to do Ruth. What y'all know about Ruth? Nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what she did. Huh? She was, they say she was faithful to her mother-in-law. Absolutely. Absolutely. She was faithful to her mother-in-law. Oh, I hope y'all seeing this. She was obedient. Do y'all know that Ruth wanted to find grace? Ruth wanted to find grace and Ruth found it? Y'all aware of that? These people had to put work in for grace. Our king did it for us, so we don't have to do that. That should push you more toward praise and worship. Lord, I just thank you. <laughs> Grace. Let's go to Ruth. He said, uh, Deja said, Ruth's mother-in-law wanted her to go back to Jerusalem, but she told her mother-in-law she was going to follow her. Absolutely. Somebody been reading about Ruth. If you read the Old Testament, you should know about Ruth. Let's go to Ruth, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. Ruth, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. We're going to read the CSB. Because I, I think y'all understand the word favor means grace. Okay? And number 10... We're going to read it in KJV so you can hear see the word found. Root chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, it reads. We, remember, we're trying to identify find and found grace. Now, Naomi had a relative on her husband's side. He was a prominent man of noble character from the Emelkics. What does it say? Emelich's family. His name was Boaz. Ruth, the Mo Mobites, asked Naomi, will you let me go into the fields and gather fallen grain behind someone with whom I find favor or grace? So she wanted to go into the field, right? to gather fallen grain so she can what? Find grace. She have to do something in order to, in order for grace to be found. 
She had to do something in order for grace to be found. What is that she had to do to find grace? And what? Gather the fallen grain. If she not do this, she don't find grace. Grace will not be found. <laughs> Let's keep, uh-huh. When they do find grace, how long does the grace obtain? When they, when they find it or when they have found it? You, once you found it, there's rest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can they lose their grace? Can they lose their grace? In the Old Testament? Absolutely. If they don't... Faithful, obedient, right living, doing right. Absolutely. Not us today, though. Because remember, God causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. One of those shining on the unjust in Noah days Water shining. Aquaman couldn't even survive that. The flood, God flooded the earth so severely that Noah and the ark was outer space floating on water. That's the Bible chapter and verse. Dispensated. <laughs> Out of space. <laughs> they say, do a Bible study on the flood. Because people understand how severe that flood was. They don't understand how, why in the world there's craters on the moon that's facing us and the moon don't spin. <laughs> this side of the moon is facing Earth. But there's holes on this side of the earth, of the moon, but on the dark side of the moon, because the moon don't spin, there's nothing. It's flat, clear. We don't want to get into that right now. We'll have Bible study on it. <laughs> Scientists are baffled. Why on the dark side of the moon, there's nothing? I think it was one little hole or something. Remember we saw that? There's like one little thing on the other side of the moon. Toward the face. But on our side, facing us, that's like a little golf ball to a big basketball. And it's facing us. So ain't no way something can hit from. I don't want to get into that teaching. Why is there holes on the side of the moon that face us? Because the moon don't spin. We'll get to that later. Let's get back to root. <laughs> don't google it don't y'all research that <laughs> we're his family <laughs> so watch this so Ruth now now let me answer her go ahead my daughter My iPad went out. That's all. Go ahead. Uh, Naomi, Naomi answered her, go ahead, my daughter. So Ruth left and entered the field to gather grain behind the harvesters. She happened, she happened to be in the portion of the field belonging to Boaz, who was from the Elmakich family. Later, when Boaz, when, when Boaz arrived from Bethlehem, he said to the harvesters, the Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they replied. Boaz asked his servants, who was in charge of the harvesters? Whose young woman is this? He's referring to Ruth. The servant answered, she is the young Moabite woman who returned with Naomi from the territory of Moab. I know I ain't saying these words, right? Just roll with me. She asked, will you let me gather fallen grain among the bundles behind the harvesters? She came and as he she came and she came and has been on her feet since early morning, except that she rested for a little in the shelter. Then Boaz said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, don't go and gather grain in another field and don't leave this one, but stay here close to my female servants. See which field they are harvesting and follow them. Haven't I ordered the young men not to touch you? 
When you are thirsty, go and drink from the jaws the young men have filled. She fell face down, bowed to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found grace with you or favor? So that you notice me, although I am a foreigner. She want to know why she done found grace. What was the grace that she found? Girl, right. When you was thirsty, go and drink from the jaws. Young men gonna feel that. Uh, the fields. That's the grace that she found. Watch this. But in order for her to have found that grace, she had to go and find it. Remember the grain we talked about earlier, right? It just didn't stop there. That was, that was a portion of it. Watch this. Why have I found favor or grace with you so that you notice me, although I'm a foreigner? Watch this. Here's the work part. Here's the find part. She had to go find this. Watch. Boaz answered, for, answered her, everything you have done for your mother-in-law since your husband's death has been fully reported to me. Uh-oh, here it is. How you left your father and mother and your native land and how you came to a people you didn't previously know. May the Lord reward you for what you have done. Uh, done? That means something was did. And may you receive a full reward from the Lord, from the Lord God of Israel, under those wings you have come for refuge. Watch this. My Lord, she said, I have found grace or favor with you. For you have confronted and encouraged your servants, although I am not like one of, you, one of your female servants. At mealtime, Boaz told her, come over here and have some bread and dip it in the vinegar sauce. <laughs> so she sat beside the harvesters and he offered her roasted grain. She ate and was satisfied and had some left over. I can keep going. You can continue the rest of the chapter. And it goes more and more about this found grace that Ruth obtained in her finding grace. How did Ruth find grace? Work, grain, left her, left her mom and daddy to, basically she left Dallas, Texas and went over to Kingstown, Jamaica. Kingstown, she gave up her life. She gave up her life. This, everything she did identified her as finding grace, which is work. And when you find something, when you go out finding something, you found it if you reach the destination. Ruth is a woman of grace. Oh, Ruth. You ain't never heard me say the word Ruth, have you? <laughs> I ain't got to give y'all no more scriptures about the Old Testament. Grace. Do we got that yet? Do I need to go to another person in the Old Testament for grace? Or can I stop there? Do I need to talk about King David? Do I need to go there and talk about that grace? Huh? Or can I stop there and, and then start, we can talk about Mr. Grace and Truth himself? Do y'all mind if we, do I got it? Look, Noah, Moses, Jacob, and Esau, Ruth. <laughs> I think you should go, David. Ooh, man. <laughs> I give, I talk about David, and then we'll go into Mr. Grace and Truth himself on part four. All right. All right, we'll talk about David. On his grace, finding and found. And then we'll go right into Mr. Grace himself, Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. <laughs> All right, who got questions? This is class. This is not church. Y'all like my shirt? You know what I mean? Next door neighbor, by the office. Mm -hmm. I got 12 shirts. Uh-uh, different, different messages. Who got questions? 
Grace in its entirety. Grace is a different operation of grace than the New Testament. This, this grace is decayed and gone, vanished away. This type of grace. But grace, the formula of this grace is still irrelevant. It's still relevant today. Decay it. Give it to him. Who took class where your notes? Give the verse of decay it. Give the verse of decay it. Let's go. Five dollar cash out. Quick. Who got it? There it is. There it is. Say it loud, Alexis. Hebrews 8 and 13. King James. You know how you got that. <laughs> All right. We wrapping up grace. And then we're going to do a bonus Bible study after grace on the flood. And how severe it is. Who got questions? All right. Take notes. I will ask questions, Devin, especially you a lot Friday. Coming straight for you Friday. Hope you got notes. And every time you don't answer right that I like, 10 push-ups you will do on camera. Absolutely. Study. Or you will be doing push-ups. Yes, sir. My son is a leader. A servant of Christ. A man. Hold his own family down one day. Also, we're going to do a Bible study on names. Nobody in Scripture represents their last name. But we do. We got to figure out why, where they came from. <laughs> yeah, Jesus don't got no last name. Moses didn't have one. Jacob didn't have one. King David didn't have one. Abraham didn't have one. God only dealt with first names. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. Viewers, may the grace of God be with you and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is class. This is not church. Until next time. <laughs>